Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm your host, Ryan, and today, my co-host Amelia and I are welcoming back Tracy Barnett to talk about Iron Ada Reforged, a cyberpunk game where you are the cause of Ragnarok. Tracy, welcome back to our character creation spotlight this time to talk about a game that I'm very excited about, and I assume Mm -hmm. you're also excited about too. Yes, I'm extremely excited about it. I'm extremely happy to be here, and I can I can feel the warmth of the spotlight upon me. I'm ready to do this. <laughs> we can all see you. It's shining. It's I'm lo- I am luminous. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself um, and other projects you have? Obviously, we're going to cover Ironetta Reforged, but anything else you want to tell people about? Sure. Uh, So I am Tracy Barnett. I am a queer non-binary game designer. I am coming up on my 10th year of professionally designing and publishing tabletop role-playing games, which is super, super cool. Uh, In addition to Iron Editor Reforged, I have a Patreon where I release uh, small games as I make them. Uh, The entire model is pay what you can, so you literally get everything that I make and everything that I have ever made. It's all there in the posts. Uh, I work for the One Shot Podcast Network, where we are lovingly being hosted at this very moment. (laughs) Uh, I'm a project manager for them. I edit the One Shot Podcast, and I am a relatively new parent as of three months ago. Mm -hmm. So my partner is very kindly uh, watching the little one while... I do my game stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I like that you include that under projects. Like I should also start, (laughs) Ryan and I should like get on that. Like projects. I, I, I made a person. (laughs) (laughs) I I made and am caring for a human. I have kept one alive for over a decade at this point. And I gotta say that's longer than I've kept any plants alive. So (laughs) I mean, it, that's, it's a very long campaign, uh, but we're, (laughs) we're, uh, you know, committed to seeing it through. So many highs yeah, and lows, I, uh, though. Like just like a real emotional. <laughs> yep. I, yeah, and the the system behind it is just indecipherable. It's really <laughs> confusing, right? <laughs> Especially really, like your first time sitting down to play it. It's just, I mean, yeah, it's really tough to. It, it, it seems like the rules change every day. <laughs> so I think of it more of a series of one shots than right, a game I was, campaign. And we can't agree on just, what edition we're playing. <laughs> so, nope, oh. not, at all, not at all. Um But I am lucky enough to be. Uh, full time in games now. So as of uh, like a month and change before she was born, I quit my day job and I primarily work for one shot, but I do my own stuff. So I'm home all day. So I'm the primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. So it really is. I mean, if you will, like an active project for me, because when I'm taking care of her, I'm taking care of her. And then when she has a nap, I'm working on whatever else I need to be working on. And that's that's what my days mm-hmm. you know, are like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's definitely a thing that you have to factor in, you know, the time for along with mm-hmm. every other project that you have going. And, you know, yep. um, definitely yeah, I don't have her on my to-do some list of your yet, creative but, you energy, know. too, the same way other things do. So, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being here, Tracy. Um, now, since this is an abridged format uh, of our normal format, uh, we'll be just sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. Uh, so without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? Can you start off by telling us um, what is the core concept for Ironetta Reforged? Yeah, so Ironetta Reforged is a cyberpunk take on the tropes of Ironetta. Um, I was on here before with Ironetta Accelerated, which was the the sort of high fantasy epic fighting a dwarven mech Ragnarok uh, sort of thing. This is a bit different. So in this, the gods have taken the Nine Realms and it's one now massive city that they rule over in a big Blade Runner-esque cyberpunk dystopia. Mm. The thing about Norse myth, though, is that Ragnarok is inevitable, and Ragnarok means the fall of the gods. So in this game, Ragnarok is coming, but it's you. You and the community that you are a part of are going to rise up and you're going to take down the gods. 
And it all starts in Jotunheim. Oh, that's amazing. I guess. Yeah. I'm ready to, like, <laughs> dethrone God. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's amazing. So uh, that effectively answers uh, the sort of setting that we play in and what characters do in this game. Uh, is there any more refined uh, details you can throw into there? Um, sure. So this this project that we're looking at right now and the one that's coming to Kickstarter soon is season one of the game. So it features a particular set of gods, and it is set, as I mentioned, in the realm of Jotunheim. Uh, in this setting, the giants... Um, you know, there need to be bone bonded for it to be an Ironetta game. That's one mm-hmm. of the three core conceits. But in this game, the giants, when they're done forging the gods' creations in the realms of fire and ice, their bodies, their bones, their brains, their sinews and synapses are taken and turned into the computer network that the gods use. Oh, wow. So Jotunheim is literally the heart of the core network. So you have a half alive, half dead semi-sentient co-linked network of giants that is feeding you ads when you pull up your smartphone. Wow. Right? What? And the, and the bone bonded, <laughs> when they summon the bones, they're literally pulling the computer stuff out of like the walls and making the big thing that they oh, that's amazing. beat down with. Yeah. So season one starts in Jotunheim. It features three of the gods. So it's uh, Tyr, Mimir, and Thor. And then the plan is for there to be six other seasons that each focus on a different one of the realms, uh, the final uh, being uh, Asgard, right? Where mm-hmm. you will take down, because uh, Odin is obviously the last that you get to mm-hmm. uh, to sort out, as it were. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Wow. Why, where did this come from? <laughs> I know this is not a question that's up, but like, I'm just, you know, because like, obviously you've been working on Ironetta for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like, where did this sort of like cyberpunk twist on it come from? So in the original Iron Edda Kickstarter, War of Metal and Bone, way back in 2013, I think, Mm -hmm. um, or 2014, I had a bunch of stretch goals where people were going to take the three core, I mentioned the three core conceits. Mm -hmm. The three core conceits is that Ragnarok is happening. Uh, humanity is bonding themselves to the bones of dead giants to fight it. And everyone belongs to a warrior clan. Mm-hmm. Those are the three things that make Iron Edda, Iron Edda, right? And there were stretch goals up to $100,000 because my eyes are far bigger than my stomach. And I had a bunch of, of guest authors who were going to come in and reframe Iron Edda however they felt like mm-hmm. it. So we had sci-fi takes, we had other fantasy takes, we had superhero takes. And it's an idea that I still believe in because it's like the principle of you ask two artists to paint a tree Mm -hmm. even if they're looking at the same tree it's going to be different because they're bringing their own stuff to the effort and i i've been thinking about i don't know the world at large and um how you could have some catharsis against the uh brutal hand of capitalism that overlays all of us Uh uh and i wanted to make more ironetta stuff so it all just sort of came together because the twist on it being Ragnarok being you is super compelling. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm playtesting this with uh B Zelda and Alex Flanagan and Jeff Stormer. And right. Just, just, right. Just, 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 yeah. just, you know, just like not to name drop or anything. Just, you know, just, just some friends, you know, yeah. close personal um, friends. <laughs> yeah. But we were doing the project and Part of my business model that I am doing now as a full-time creator is I want to do a zine-based Kickstarter roughly once every four months Mm -hmm. or every three months or so. Like once a quarter, I'm doing a zine because that gives a nice pop of income because I can make those at a profit. Mm -hmm. And I had a sequel to You Are the Dungeon that I was working on and I wasn't feeling it like it wasn't the juice wasn't coming. And so I floated the idea past them of what if we just took Jotunheim? What if we just did the realm we're doing as season one and then... The others followed and they were like, yeah, that seems doable. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, so the podcast of us doing the playtesting is coming out on September 28th when the Kickstarter launches, also hosted on the One Shot Network podcast network. And when the campaign funds, I'm going to be producing an actual play podcast uh, or an actual play video series with B Zelda and uh, DJ, also Big Bees on Twitter and uh, Danny, Brutal Dan on Twitter. And we're going to have a six episode 
uh, series that One Shot is hosting as well. Cool. So we're doing uh, the Kickstarter is a zine and a podcast and a video actual play series. Very cool. That's so cool. I think yeah. I think the idea of like being the one that brings about Ragnarok is like a very timely. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of us have probably been very feeling the cyberpunk feels <laughs> the last like a year mm-hmm. or two of just like um yeah. you know the, the corporate world just kind of taking over and mm-hmm. um, so, sorry like, world your dystopia sorry, showing yeah uh <laughs> look ryan and i complain about capitalism plenty on this show so i think it's been that like, like your past four mm, villains I, right? I think it has. it's like what is our villain mm, capitalism um so i think like we've obviously been feeling that and the idea of like being able to like do something about that um, mm-hmm. is I, I really wanted to play a good cyberpunk game lately because it's it's very cathartic to be able to like actually do something about that instead of mm-hmm. like the sort of like helplessness and flailing that I feel in my real life right now. Um, yeah. So I think that that's this is very timely too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wonderful. What kind of materials do we need to play this game? I know that Iron Etta was a Fate Accelerated game mm-hmm. is this still in that same system are we doing something different um it is something different it has its roots in other systems like mm-hmm. there are things about it that are reminiscent of fate um but really you just need d6s mm. because the the big sh- the, the the big sort of cyberpunk game in the in the industry is shadow run mm-hmm. right that's the one a lot of people have heard of and so i riffed on that uh, the dice mechanic is very much shadow run, right? You have a pool of dice. There's a set difficulty target number, and you're looking for fives and sixes as successes. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that it has going on that we will we'll get into because even though this is just an abridged version, the simple is the the system is really compact. Okay. So we'll literally hear about all of it without much of an issue. So we don't have to learn shadow run to play this game. No, that's what I'm hearing. No, 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 no. I just want to like put that out there for yeah. everyone. You don't have to learn Shadowrun. You can just uh-uh. play this game. Because <laughs> I don't want to learn Shadowrun. Like I <laughs> no love, one does. I love the Neo Scum podcast. I don't I think anybody that's ever I love played Shadowrun playing knows Shadowrun. Shadowrun. I don't want to learn it. <laughs> no, I just want I just want someone to tell me uh, what what a stat and ability I need to put together, mm-hmm. and then I can roll my d sixes, and then you can figure out the math. Right? Yep. Like uh, you tell me how many forklift. <laughs> I'll throw them on the table and then we'll go. Yep. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Roll around in my bathtub full of dice. And <laughs> yep. <laughs> pull the, uh, pull the lever of the, the, the D six dice drop from the ceiling. Oh, yes. It needs to be like, yeah. Like, like, was it like a dirty dancing? Like <laughs> just like yeah. pull the thing and then mm-hmm. like have the dice come raining down. Oh, that's flash dance. The flash dance. Oh. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Dirty, dirty dancing is you, you would lift somebody up and their head would be like hitting a pinata full of dice. Oh, see, that would be perfect too. Yeah. You, you could have the time of your dice. I'm thinking of the slime from You Can't Do That on Television. Uh, oh, yeah, that's good, yeah. too. Uh, that's so great. Only, only D6s. What I'm hearing <laughs> kind of... is we need a tank and a lever, and you pull it, and D6s come out. Yep. This, I, where's the Kickstarter? I don't <laughs> know, I Tracy. You're the expert here. <laughs> you tell me where the Kickstarter is. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> you're right. You're right. I'll cop to that. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> Okay, uh, so what sort of characters then can people make in this game? Whatever you want, literally. So the only thing that is true about all the characters is that every character belongs to one of the nine, ten warrior clans. Mm -hmm. Um, They are uh, all listed out. They're the same warrior clans in the previous Iron Etta games. So they are uh, Bear, Bone Bonded being the tenth, not really a clan in a traditional sense, but it's still there. Uh, Dragon, Hammer, horse, ox, raven, snake, wolf, and sparrow. So the cool thing about characters in this game is that they are super, super duper easy to make. And there's a really good reason for that. When you start off, you'll do neighborhood questions the way that we're going to do here in a little bit, and you'll make your characters. But say you meet someone new, like uh, the neighborhood matriarch or the person who owns the club that you all go to, right? Whenever you meet a new character, and I'm not even saying NPC on purpose, when you meet a new character, the group stops real quick and makes that character with every player contributing one of the three details that a character needs. The reason you do it that way is because when we watch stories on television or in a movie, 
we rarely, if ever, just see the story from one character's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. There's a, a, another scene where you can have dramatic irony. Well, oh, well, this character knows is doing this thing, but the other character doesn't know about it, right? In Ironetta Reforged, your group can switch characters as often as you want to. Oh, very cool. So if you make someone and you're like, yo, this person is really, really cool. I want to see what their life is like amidst all of this and how they're contributing to the revolution. Cool. You switch to that character. If they're already made, someone takes them over. You make a few more people around them for a scene. You define the end goal of that scene. So everyone has a framework to role play off of. And then you make the new characters. You choose who you're playing and you do a scene. And then suddenly you've got another group of characters and you can have like Charlie Day-esque pointing back at the conspiracy (laughs) map. Like you can have a, a web of people that you've all made and you can tell this story from whatever perspectives are most effective for you. Wow. Very it's cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Very cool. Oh my gosh. That sounds like our yeah. kind of game, Ryan. Seriously. Think of it. <laughs> like, think of how many characters you can make. There's so mm-hmm. many. <laughs> and, well, it's funny because as we're playtesting this game, the the three folks that I'm doing this with, a few times they said, Well, this is the kind of thing that I would want to see in this game, but you know, it's your game. This is just playtest feedback. And I said, I asked you all to do this together for a reason. I wanted you three, because we can make a game that we all like, because there are players who play like us, Mm -hmm. right? There are people who want to do this kind of experience. So that's what we're doing. We're making a game that we want to see. And there are other people who will be able to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, certainly I think everybody should make the game that they want to play, but Mm -hmm. you know, there are plenty of people, Tracy, that aren't going to play the same way you are. You know, and so mm-hmm. if you make a game only based on what Tracy wants, like it's it's yeah. a limited scope. Not that you don't have great taste, but mm-hmm. thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the the first game in a while. I mean, the small games that I've made, their systems are all over the place, but this is the first game, big like kickstarted published thing since One Shot back in twenty twelve. No, yeah, twenty twelve. That is my own system, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Nice. So that feels pretty cool, too. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So this is the fun part. Can you walk us through the process of character creation? Let's make some people. I can. Uh, we will start, as with every Iron Edda game, at least the ones that I write, with making a neighborhood first, because you have to know the context for the characters before you can make the characters. Mm-hmm. So uh, I gave you all a link to the document. Uh, We're on page eight. There's only one neighborhood and its attendant questions uh, written right now. And that neighborhood is the same one featured in the podcast uh, that's coming to one shot uh, shortly. And that is the neighborhood of puppet strings. There was an uprising long ago. No one remembers who started it. It was put down by the gods and their RPB forces quickly and with prejudice. Those who survived fled to the area that became known as puppet strings a massive collections of ligaments and tendons, all linked cargo transportation systems throughout Jotunheim. The area was thought to be uninhabitable, but one of the survivors noted a pattern to the movements and began to build. Now Puppet Strings is a relatively safe portion of Midgard for those who wish the gods ill. Buildings and platforms move and shift seemingly at random. Any outsiders to the neighborhood risk the loss of life and limb trying to navigate through the razor-sharp warren of platforms and cables. Those born here, or those who have taken the time to learn, Navigate the deadly maze with ease. Oh, that's so wild. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for this. Gosh. All right. So. Like, every single every single thing you tell us about this game makes me want it more. This, <laughs> I'm doing my job right. <laughs> I think that's the whole point, Ryan. I know. So, who would like to answer the first question? Um, I would love to. Why not? Fantastic. Roll me a d6 for a top-level category. Ooh, dice. No, no, floor dice. It's a three. It's a three. So uh, your category is here and now. So this question has to deal with the present. Uh, Go ahead and roll it again. One. One. A note shows up at your home with information on it. What does the first part of the note say? What do you need to decrypt the second part? Why did I agree to go first? Um... (laughs) (laughs) I think it says something about um, 
like an upcoming change in the pattern of all of these like platforms and things um like sort of a warning that things are going to shift um, all right and i'm noting all this stuff down on the play space that we have i'm currently on slide number three okay um, and then what do you need to decrypt the second part um i think you need the help of someone who is like familiar with kind of like how they're programmed now i mean i know that it's you know like flesh programs but um someone who's kind of familiar with like how how it's determined now um to kind of help me make sense of like the sort of instructions or whatever that's in the second part nice uh, um so someone who's familiar with the new algorithm mm-hmm. then which mm-hmm. like think about how when twitter changes the algorithm what do we do right we have to figure it out mm-hmm. right Cool. Uh, Then, uh, as usual, you need to go to slide number two, and you need to draw something on the map that represents the answer to your questions while Ryan rolls a d6 and gets their question. I rolled a one. A one. This is ties to the past. Roll again. Two. Two. Your question is, a vagrant stumbled into incisors claiming to know you. What two things did they tell you and which one was a lie? Ooh. So Incisors is a club. Uh, it's established in the canon, you know, a few pages up. Um, if you saw the art drop that I did, that's the big uh, building with the skull front. Mm. Uh, it is a club run by one of the only living giants outside of either Muspelheim or uh, Niflheim. Nice. Yeah. So, okay. What two things did they tell you and which one was a lie? Oh, boy. One of the things I was thinking of, um, because it it feels to me like this is a safe haven because um, it's it's not exactly within the direct view of the gods. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm going to say one of the things uh, that we're told is that um, the gods are close to finding this uh, safe haven. Uh, The other thing, um, let's see. Gonna say that um, I don't know why I'm I'm choosing like really big things here. Because you're playing a game where you're going to be instigating Ragnarok. I mean that's fair. Okay. Um, that there's uh, there's a uh, thing in the works to um, nullify the effects of the bone bonded. Cool. Which one's a lie? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up to fate. Let me see. All right. One through three is number one. Uh, four through six is number two. Uh, it's number two is the lie. Okay. Um, the lie is about, which I think is perfect story wise, right? That seems yeah. like the exact kind of thing that like a state run news agency would, would put out there. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I, I love it. Cool. Uh, go ahead and, uh, draw something on the map to represent your answer to that question. And I will go ahead and roll questions for myself. So we got a six, which is mists of the future. And the question is number two, where it is an RPB, which is realms police bureau. An RPB raid is coming in three days. What do you need to help hide before then? And why will that be so difficult? Um, so, I think that to to hide from the raid um oh I think that um we're sheltering a group of new bone bonded and their presence is going to need to be hidden and the reason that's going to be so difficult is because the giants that they're bonded to, they've recently been part of like other programs and subroutines and algorithms that the gods have been mandating. So now they've got freedom in the network for the first time in who knows how long. Mm -hmm. So their giants are like kids on the last day of school. Oh yeah. And the bell and the bells just rung. Mm -hmm. So uh, the giants are freshly released and running amok. 
Awesome. Uh, so on my little space here, I'm just going to. Is this an eyeball, Ryan? Yeah, because the guys are out, they're they're watching. They're watching. I Somebody's see you. Watching. <laughs> and we're gonna put that over there, and we're gonna change that color to yellow. So that's that's like a a computer system with like a lightning bolt running down into it because everything is just going on the fritz overpowered all over the place. Exactly. So uh, that is the framework within which our characters exist. So we now move to slide four and this is all you need to make a character in this game. Uh, Every character has a name and their warrior clan. There are three details. Details are like aspects in fate, right? They're short, descriptive, true phrases Every detail is linked to a number. That number is the number of dice that you roll when you're in a risky situation or you want or the uncertainty would be beneficial to the story. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other time you either succeed at the action outright just because it makes narrative sense for you to do so. uh, Or when you are in a risky situation and you want another control point back, which is what you use to uh, highlight a detail and re-roll your dice you can choose to fail an action on purpose mm. and that gets you a control point. It's, it's the opposite of like a GM compel, right? Because I don't, that the, the mechanics of that are a little sticky for me mm-hmm. when playing fate. It's not my favorite part of the system. Mm. And so I just got rid of it and made player driven failure, the mechanism by which you get more points back. It, okay. it feels a little like uh, the belonging notes had belonging, um, a little bit like that mechanic. <laughs> Who's been reading a lot of belonging outside belonging games recently? That's me. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> yeah, who could it be? So, uh, all you need to do is come up with a name, pick one of the three warrior clans that we have available to us, um, and then write in your details and drop in some gear if you want to. Choose some pronouns. Um, there will be genders listed with each of the uh, warrior clans, and they are going to be very much sleepaway style genders like. A rusted sword, the the battle cry of a of a dying warrior, right? Mm-hmm. Like those are going to be the the genders for this game. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Amelia, since you went first, if you'll take the leftmost uh, box there, Ryan, if you'll take the middlemost, and I'll take the one on the right side. All right. Cool. Uh, and I will. I'll let you two choose your clans first, since we only have three to choose from. We have Wolf, Snake, and Bone Bonded as of today, because the others mm-hmm. are not written yet. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the wolf and the snake? I know what the bones bonded are, but I don't remember the other ones. So, um, wolves, their archetype is group cohesion and recruitment. Wolves are the glue that holds their group of friends together. More than a few have the ancient phrase, the pack is all, held in a place of honor in their home or tattooed on their body. Their abilities involve teamwork, setting up their allies for success, and tending to those they care about. They aren't the face of any given group. That honor is reserved for sparrows, but they do have a tendency to bring the most recruits in for the fight against the gods. And then snakes. Uh, Stealth and covert operations is their overarching uh, theme. Get in, secure the asset, and get out, unsuspected and undetected. This is the way of the snake. You might use social networking in disguise to work your way into a corporate office. You might don tactical gear and use slicing tools to break into a secured facility after hours to find what you need. No matter what you are, your approach, you are solid, dependable, and unseen by those who, who you don't wish to see you. If the job requires stealth, that's your world. Woe betide anyone who disturbs your nest. All right. Ryan, then, I remember you did Bone Bonded last time. I did do Bone Bonded last time. And I do remember that. And I'm uh, going to read the Bone Bonded just because yes. we're on a, an audio medium here. Yes, so. go for it. The gods didn't just take the bodies and bones of the giants for their networks. They also took the giants' spirits and harnessed them. Vast chained intelligences, the giants are the backbone of the network in all the ways that matter. But not all of them stay chained. Humanity, in its effort to overthrow the gods, has found a way to ally with the rogue giants in the system. These bone-bonded are walking live connections to the network. The giant navigates the human host as easily as the human navigates the network. The symbiotic relationship is a strange and powerful dynamic. In addition to your character details, you also decide the details to the giant to which you are bonded. You need to choose the giant's name and to find three details about them. So, uh, there's a paragraph there that is not ac- accurate for uh, the current build of the game, so I just deleted it. Hurrah, All right. There you go. Revisions. So, those are the three <laughs> that are available to us. Okay. Um, I 
feel like it doesn't make sense for me to be a bone bonded, even though I like it, because otherwise I feel like I'd be able to read that note. That's very that fair. So that, that doesn't really sense. make any sense. In which hmm. case, I would like to be a snack. Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Sorry. Like, okay, this one this one screams Amelia. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, I mean, Wolf is like all about having the friends, so... Well, I know it, and now I'm now I'm torn because Wolf uh, is uh, very me, mm-hmm. uh, but Bone Bonded is so metal. Uh-huh. I know. Uh, well, in this it. case, it's vaporwave, but yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, goodness gracious! Uh, you know what? I'll 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 switch it up. Uh, we'll we'll take the Wolf. Um, just right, be and- yourself, you know. Yeah. And I will be the beat that drops of the dubstep hits we're listening to. All right. Nice. All right. So clan is name. Names. Hardest part. <laughs> Tracy's just like hardest part. Type, type, type. I've got a name already. All right, John. <laughs> that's because I, I, I eat names for breakfast. Oh, okay. So that's that's what we're missing. Yeah, names yeah, are part there, of a Dallas breakfast. There, uh, <laughs> I think Aww. I'm going to save it uh, for for later because I need to figure out um, the rest of the details before I can... Before you can uh, know what a good name is? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so uh, we've got the uh, we've got the clan. Uh, now, how do we do the rest of it? Uh, you simply write the details. Um, so you, you write three aspect-like things that define who your character is, you know, Anything that you want to to let the be present in the world about them, right? So, uh, for example, I I wrote mine really quickly because mine are already already done because it's my game. I know how to do that. So I chose for my excellent detail the network knows me, uh, and that basically means any any interaction that I have with computer stuff, I'm going to bring ten dice to the table for that. Um, but then that also cuts both ways, right? Because I might be a known quantity online and that could cause problems. Um, for seven, uh, the good detail, I wrote hope springs eternal, uh, just because I, I like that about who I want this character to be. And so when I would be, uh, say in a situation where I need to convince someone of a plan that may not go so great. I'm always hopeful. I always believe it's going to happen. And so I would use those dice. And then my fair deal is, wait, who? Me? And that represents me trying to sort of worm my way out of sticky situations where I've sort of been ID'd. Uh, but I'm not great at it. You know, I only get five dice to be able to do that. Uh, so that's that's that. I just made made the details. And I can see you all are typing as well. All right. Oh, um, some good Ryan, details coming down. <laughs> some good details coming down. <laughs> Um, no, those were excellent. <laughs> now we're on good. Okay. Now we're on good. <laughs> I almost said I almost said fair, and then I realized that we'd be in a who's on first, third base situation, and right. I just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I need a good detail and a fair detail. I'm like writing all of this down, and I've been playing so much Overwatch lately that I'm like, I'm just gonna make Sombra. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Sombra's a great character for this setting. I love Sombra. So you're just going to put down for, for fair, everything can be hacked and everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm thinking just, about it. Just, just I'm going to do it. You just, know what? Just put her barks. It's fine. <laughs> just trying to think of more uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes. <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Um, okay. What is a good... <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give myself like really weird gear, but mm-hmm. like then I'm like, you would never use that in a game. But then also I'm like, <laughs> you're not playing this game, so it probably doesn't matter. I could give myself whatever I want. Also, it's a cyberpunk game. Gear can be like really esoteric and weird. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I got to go with it. Do it. Were you there just we looking go. up Fantastic. Schwarzenegger quotes? I was. <laughs> uh, I, I was trying to find ones that that fit the the wolf clan uh well enough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um awesome so so for my excellent detail i went with come with me if you want to live uh and then my good detail if it bleeds we can kill it and uh the fair detail i'll be back 
Um, so I'm thinking uh, like the the first one is like trying to rally people or whatever. I'm assuming we can interpret it throughout the game mm-hmm. um, to to come with me to convince people. Basically, um, the second one it would be for uh, you know trying to to pep talk people into going up against the odds. Mm-hmm. And then the last one is uh, you know I'm I'm always gonna have your back if it effectively nice yeah i went with from excellent detail i share the city's heartbeat um which i wanted to be just like being able to like move silently or sort of like in rhythm with all of the other things that are happening nice um my good detail i picked it's a shortcut uh which is just knowing my way around everything and how to um you know we talked about the platform sort of moving at random and like knowing that you know um really really well and then my fair detail, I went ahead and picked everything can be hacked. Awesome. Uh, so there are also three slots for gear. Uh, gear is just something that you name. Um, you get an extra die to your pool if your gear can help you in a situation. And if you're in a situation and your gear is going to hinder you, then the narrator or if you're playing GMlessly, because this game is like so close to being GMless, it's not even funny. Um, <laughs> then you'll take a, a a die away from your pool, right? Really simple, really straightforward, just a narrative little thing. I actually pulled that mechanic from school days. That's how the the ranks in school days work. Um, so like I picked slicing tools, illegal. In parentheses, so if someone spots them, right, that's not good for me. Uh, I've got a boot knife, and then I have a bullet that is made from my the ashes of my uh, dead mother, compressed into a ceramic bullet. Wow! Yeah, that's hardcore. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and then, um, and gear can be filled in in the moment too, right? If we're in a situation, you can just be like, "Oh, right, I've got that thing." And as long as you have mm-hmm. a gear mm-hmm. slot available, sure, you've got that thing. Uh, and then you just need to give yourself some names. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only gear I came up with so far was a tactical turtleneck because that seemed like a thing I would need. Yeah, uh, Ryan, I think your character's name should be Connor Johnson. Connor Johnson. Yeah, John Connor from Terminator. Oh my goodness, that's very cl- that's very that's very good. <laughs> I think on that. I need two more uh, two more gears. Connor Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You know, we're just gonna do this. Watch this. <laughs> Take that, internet. I'm going to name my character Olivia Colomar, which is Sombra's actual name. Nice. Which I know because I looked it up on the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'm going to just have to think on, on gear if it comes yeah. to me. Well, but I don't feel like it's, you know. It just looks weird. Connor Johnson? Why does it look weird? I don't know. I think it looks great. But yeah, I mean... Like you're pondering a name and you're thinking about gear, but like, that's it. The character's done. That's everything. Yeah. All I've got right now for gear is just the biggest sword. Yeah. Nice. I mean, what else do you need? um, And then the only other mechanical things that you would need to know if you're playing the character is that um, every warrior clan follows what's known as a way. And in this game, there is only one set of ways for each clan. But like in season two, there's going to be a new set. In season three, there'll be another set. So you eventually you'll be able to choose different like power sets for your character. And uh, I've got the bone bonded up in front of me still here. So this way is the way of the network. And every way gives you three abilities. One ability that's at need. So you can do it anytime you would roll the dice. One ability that you can do once per scene. And one ability that you can do once per session. Uh, which is a riff on fourth edition's power structure, right? At need, at mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, so f- the bone bonded, uh, their at need ability is ancient flex. Whenever you do uh, roll to do something with the network, you take two of your die pool and set them to successes before you roll. And you say how your giant ensured those successes. Uh, once per scene, glitch in the network, you can exploit a network resource uh, of difficulty three or lower. Just do it, Right. And then once per session, it's the living network, which is also Hmm. some of the bones, right? Because the bone bonded has to be able to to call up a giant mech of bone network stuff. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So everyone has that. And so if we were playing and we... I like that mine is called Lights Out. (laughs) I'm so excited about this. 
<laughs> yeah, the first ability is called Lights Out, which is a very somber thing. Um, mm-hmm. So if we were playing and we ran a scene and you ran into another NPC or another character, we would stop real quick and each of us would just come up with a detail and we'd decide on a warrior clan and that's it. The character's made. They're ready to go. Mm-hmm. We name them and then suddenly they're in our pool of people that we can play. And that's, so that's cool. the whole thing. And the the last mechanical bit, um, just because I said up top that we're going to cover them all, if you uh, fail a roll or succeed at a cost, you don't take stress or anything like that. Uh, you get glitch dice. And glitch dice are D6s of another color that the next time you would take an action, whether you would normally roll for it or not, you have to roll and you have to include your glitch dice. And if glitch dice come up with hits then narrative things happen to you in accordance with how many hits it is. And it's just consequences that make sense in the moment for the story, because since you're not playing just the one character, it's okay if they die, if it makes narrative sense, right? It can be Mm -hmm. a dramatic and impactful thing because you're not as a player stuck. You have any, literally anyone else in the world that you want to play. So the group decides, does this make sense, right? Are the stakes, does someone have a, a, a knife to your throat or a gun pointed at you when you glitch? Okay, death is probably mm-hmm. on the table because it makes narrative sense. Are you trying mm-hmm. to climb a ladder, you know, and it's tense, sure, but like, is it fun if your character then falls off the ladder and dies? No, this isn't this isn't first edition D&D, right? That's not what this is. <laughs> but might you fall and break a leg? Yeah. And then you have to just remember my leg is broken and you're going to play the game as if your leg is broken and it will be broken Mm -hmm. until you get it. Like it's a lot of the impact of this stuff is narratively driven. There is a mechanical layer to it as well. Like say, uh, okay, well for the rest of this session, your at need ability is not going to be available to you. Right. Because, Mm -hmm. uh, say you wanted to use lights out as your, as your snake Amelia, right. You may have established, okay, well I have, uh, I have this tool in my hand that when I squeeze it, it like sends out a little pulse of of energy that whips from light to light to light to light to light. Well, you just did something earlier where your right hand got injured and you've got this thing grafted to your palm. Well, OK, then until mm-hmm. you have a chance to get that fixed, you can't use lights out. Right. It's it. None of this stuff is like, oh, like me right now where I can't do things with required. Squeezing. You know, I, I may have woven a little bit of real life into your character, but um, <laughs> it was actually completely unintentional. And I'm actually it's really funny that, that happened. But I was just because this morning I was trying to like, uh, like put dry shampoo in my hair, too. And I can't like push down the thing on the bottle. And I was like, oh, no, yeah, I'm stuck. No. Uh, but the point is that glitch dice just bring to the table narrative consequences for risky actions that make narrative sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're all, th- this game is very much in the wheelhouse of playing this game as telling a story together because we mm-hmm. know the end result. Ragnarok's inevitable. You're going to take down a god. When you say, we're taking down Thor, yes, you're taking down Thor. That will be the end of this mm-hmm. campaign arc. Who, but tell me how exactly. you get there. <laughs> who does it, how it happens, what it looks like, what the fallout of it is. Those are all unknowns. Those mm-hmm. are the, the, the juicy bits we get to, to figure out. But that's mm-hmm. why characters are so straightforward, right? Because, you know, if you play with a group of people who like this style of game, you can come up with characters really, really easily. Mm-hmm. And because the mm-hmm. power sets are so straightforward, it's like, oh, we're in Jotunheim and you're a bear. Great, there are your powers. Oh, wait, this... this Ox is from uh, uh, Svartalfheim, the Dark Elf realm. Oh, their powers are going to be this, right? Which that season mm-hmm. is not written yet, but still, you get the idea. It's it's really flexible. You still can make compelling and deep characters who have like a lot that you feel like you know about them, and you can switch mm-hmm. from person to person to person to person as much as you want to. Or as little as you want to. Mm-hmm. This feels like it would be a really good game for a West Marches campaign. Um, because you can switch characters easily mm. and move people in and out. Yeah. And, you know, like there's a lot going on and you're kind of playing in a sort of set mm-hmm. place. And um, I'd love to see a campaign like that of this game. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of opportunity for something like that yeah. here. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. That's the whole. Th- I mean, that is literally the game tip to toe. Ooh, love it. it 
Oh, Very nice. This is so cool. That's so cool. I was really like, I've been kind of watching on Twitter and everything and like, you know, watching it form, <laughs> um, but have been very confused, I think, about like, I'm like, oh, but I really like it. But like, how, like, how is it different? How does it work? You well, know, it, it, um, mm-hmm. this is like, oh, it's, this is it's exciting. It's still Ironetta, right? Like, and, and, right, that, and that's right. the thing that I think is so cool about, and, and you could do this with any number of properties. I, I'm just happy that I've chosen to do it with Ironetta. But when you define mm-hmm. what what makes a thing what it is, mm-hmm. you can then apply those things either in different contexts or you can flip them a little bit. And it right. it's still the same thing, but mm-hmm. the way you play it out is totally different. And Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is why I'm glad that you decided to do it with your with your own game because I think that you of all people obviously have the strongest sense of what those core core pieces of the identity yeah. are. Um, I mean, and you know, you've explained them to me several times, but I still don't think that I could like do it as well as you can. Of like, this is what makes it an Iron at a game. Now I can play with all of these other pieces. Right, but but now that um, you've seen it in two different contexts. Right, if you right. had a, a wild hair to be like, oh, I want to make an Iron Edda game that is set in a perpetually underground civilization that blah, blah, or whatever, like I th- firmly mm-hmm. believe you could do that, right? Because once you oh, yeah. see yeah. that reapplication, it it's mm-hmm. it sparks something, right? It, it helps you think about what else it could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited about this though. Like this has like some of the like I've I've loved Ironetta since I play tested it that one time mm-hmm. years ago. Um <laughs> gosh, that was a really long time ago. 2017. Um, no wait. Time. That would have been it would have been 2000. <laughs> yeah, it was 17. Anyway. Yeah. 17. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it was my first Acaticon. Yeah. Um but um I I I have been craving like a, a good cyberpunk game that isn't Shadowrun, um, and I'm I'm excited good. about this. This is really mm-hmm. cool. This is really Thank you. cool. I'm, I'm I'm really really hype about what we've been able to come up with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You should be absolutely. Um, before we go, is there any uh, anything else that's uh, really interesting from the Kickstarter that you want to highlight uh, that we haven't gone over uh, yet? So I will circle back, and I want to re-highlight the podcast and the video actual play because there Mm -hmm. are specific reasons that I chose to do these alongside a zine project, right? Mm -hmm. I think all three of us have backed a lot of Kickstarters, right? Especially a lot of Kickstarters for other Mm -hmm. games. I think each of us can say that we have played somewhere between five and 10% of the Kickstarters for games that we have backed and not because the games weren't Ouch. finished, but because we didn't play them. <laughs> right. Which is fine. Uh-huh. You can support. I mean, the point of a Kickstarter is to support yeah. the project and what the creator does with it after that is their own own business. And you may or may not be part of its ongoing life or whatever. But mm-hmm. I think the rise of streamed games the success of things like Critical Role has shown us that there are far more ways to engage with a game than playing the game from the text, right? Yes. So Mm -hmm. having the podcast lets you not only listen to the game sort of passively when you're doing other stuff, right? We're all fans of podcasts. We do them ourselves. Right. Um, I've heard of those. I've I've casted a pod (laughs) of once upon yonder years. Anyway. um, (laughs) But in this one, you also get to see the entire playtesting process because where we start Mm -hmm. was it started was a totally different system. It was a much more complex convoluted thing. And the moment I mentioned a neighborhood matriarch, we make someone that we met because the, the making a character with details thing was established early on. Someone says, I think it might've been Alex or B said, this character is so cool. I want to know what's going on with them. And that led to a conversation about how we could make that kind of thing happen. So you get to, you get to see mm-hmm. what really goes into, went into making this game. And you also get to experience the narrative yeah. from the video side People who do video actual play get paid like absolute garbage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met with uh, Jess, who's Burst of Hope on Twitter. They do um, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff with Utopia. They do tons of streaming content. 
Uh, they were going to produce the series, but it didn't work out. But I still gained a lot of valuable insight from them in that if you pay performers $30 an hour, you're in the top 10% of what people are getting paid to do video actual plays. If you mm-hmm. paid 40, you're paying close to SAG rates for members of the Screen Actors Guild who have like union mandated wow. rates. When I looked at producing a six episode series of two hours an episode, I could raise the money for that. It, be- it became like mm-hmm. a non-question to me as to whether or not it's something that I should do. It's a little bit different since I'm mm-hmm. producing it myself because I've got to, you know, take the time and be on camera and facilitate the sessions. But that's okay. I think it's worth it to not only mm-hmm. give these performers actual good paying gig work, but to get to work with B and Danny and B's because they're awesome. And right. to have another avenue that people can absorb this game. Because if this works mm-hmm. out, it's going to be a formula for the later seasons too. So when you see Iron Edder Reforged season two, Muspelheim or whatever realm I decide it's going to be, you're not going to look at it and go, oh, it's another game that I can't, you know, I'll, I, I might back it. I get the PDF. I'm maybe I'll read it. Right. Cause sometimes you don't, mm-hmm. but there's going to be a podcast and there's going to be a video series. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to find some way into it. And I want right. this game to be able to hit people on a variety of different axes. And those are the three mm-hmm. big ones right now. So, um, yeah, I think that there's value in like learning to play games mm-hmm. that way too in the last year or so i've started like really reading rpg books cover to cover yeah because um, i had to but like prior to doing all of the stuff with the ennies i was much more likely to consume rpg content or to learn how to play a game from an actual play podcast and then i would sit mm-hmm. down at the table with friends and be like okay i understand how this works in practice because i would read it and then be like i don't really totally get what mm-hmm. the rules are set you know and I know lots of people who like prefer to have streams on because they can throw it on their iPad or something while they're doing dishes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, so I think the accessibility of it, too, for people being able to like absorb the game and before they take it to their own table is is hugely different and important. I agree completely. Mm-hmm. Well, is there anything else that you want to cover before we head out? Uh any last this words, is, Tracy? This, this is the last <laughs> one. <It's my> last <laughs> this is it. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth a... Po- oh, no. Um, oh. Um, I, know, I can do the first paragraph I had to learn in fifth grade. It's as far as I can get, though. Uh, these will be my final words, then. <laughs> uh, this episode is dropping the day the Kickstarter launches on Tuesday, September 28th. So it is running from now until the middle of October. You've got about three weeks to go and back this Uh you get the zine at every level. Um, you can get it signed and personalized. There's even an option to get uh, to play a session of this with me if you if you feel like uh, doing mm-hmm. that and you have the disposable income. And everybody gets the podcast and everybody gets the actual play. Uh, alongside this, the first episode of the podcast drops on the One Shot Network also on September 28th. So when you're done listening to this, if you want to hear that session zero where we establish the puppet strings that is in the campaign of the play test, you can go listen to it. Oh, so good. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Oh, same here. I'm always excited when you put stuff out, but now I'm like, oh, I know what this is. Yep. <laughs> I was excited before I knew what it was. But now- Thank you. That's, that's high praise. <laughs> now I really for real. appreciate it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Iron Ada Reforged. You are welcome. This is a pleasure as always. <laughs> can you remind everybody where they can find you online? You can find me online anywhere at the other Tracy, T R A C Y. Well, thank you so much for doing a special bonus extra episode with us. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to check out the Iron Edda Reforged Kickstarter, which is going on right now. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. 
Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker. Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond. Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure. And Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not. I am recording. The waveforms. We have waveforms. Yeah, they are there. Forms. And they're delicious. Forming the waves. Forming the waves coming from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of pleasure sounding dirty, waves <laughs> coming from my mouth doesn't sound all that much better. <laughs> Welcome Someday to the I, we're gonna make like a um like a character creation cast after dark, but it's just all gonna be things that Ryan says that are unintentionally really filthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're gonna show the dark side of our pure sweet Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> the time he says, the, Here come the fingers. <laughs> here come the fingers. <laughs> You corrupted him into making an evil character, and it's all downhill. Yeah, no, it's all downhill. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm good on my noise gate. I'm gonna just make a bunch of dice noises this whole time. That sounds horrible. Because uh, they're in a glass I, jar. Uh, please, <laughs> maybe uh, move, he's like maybe move he's the like, glass. Jar. No lie. <laughs> yeah, just keep your hand in the glass jar. And just play with it the whole time. This is supposed to be a really fast edit. <laughs> <laughs> I can, how about, is this better? It's like, uh, it's like negative ASMR. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Stop shaking. Did you break your mic? No. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. nothing don't happened. worry about it. It's fine. Don't no, worry about we're, it. We are ready to go. Fantastic. I had to figure out which one of these documents is the actual... All right, oh, I forgot here. that I'm uh, recording in a sauna, so I'm going to take off my lawn sleeve shirt. So one second. Ooh, take it off! Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes. I can't go anywhere with you two. Especially not your own song. I'm sorry, Ashley. 
Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, enjoy that, if you need people. Some, if, if you need some quality outtake content, we got you there. We got you. <laughs> Come for the content. Uh, stay for the outtakes. That's right. That's why we put them at the end, so you have to stay for them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I always, like, want to say it, but then, you know, I'm like, I know Ryan will put it in later. That's just more he has to cut out, but, like, it's fine. Can you just leave Tracy saying it this time? I'll I'll overlay Now Ryan can put put me in with the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to get overlaid. That's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Uh, Well, before we move on, let me uh, start the backup recording. (laughs) Ryan. (laughs) So, uh, whoops. Uh, In case anything catastrophically fails... We only have 20 minutes to make up. Well, probably 15, technically. Well, only the good 20 minutes, though. Yeah, I know. So, uh, <laughs> All the part where we were, like, snapping for Ryan to take his shirt off, it's not in there anymore. I'm, oh, no, I'm I'm saving all of my audio. Oh, yes. I've got my yeah, snaps, I, I yeah, promise. Please. I'm saying, if we all lose our audio, that would be sad. It would be sad. Um, <clears throat> no, I gave Jude a what for about that the other day, because they lost an episode, because Steph's audio went bad. And I was like... You weren't recording a backup, and he's like, "We forgot to hit record on the backup." Oh no! And I was like, "Oh no!" It's been a while. I was like, "It happens to everybody at some point." Though I was like, "Now you're a real podcaster." Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. like, oops. Can anyway, you... are these were these here before? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. To, I forgot to clear those out. Okay, I just wasn't sure. I was like, I don't remember putting those, or did like Ryan type in the wrong box? Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Should I stop my recording? We can, yeah, we can stop my recording. My recording. Stop.